Hi guys, so let's finish off aerobic respiration. This is video four on aerobic respiration and we're gonna cover oxidative phosphorylation, also known as the electron transport chain. Well, what happens in the electron transport chain and what makes it so valuable in producing ATP? In fact, the majority of your ATP is produced in the electron transfer chain, provided you've got enough oxygen to act as the terminal electron acceptor. So stick with me, I'm gonna cover everything you need to know for AQA A-level biology, and go through some exam questions at the end to really help you with applying the knowledge we're gonna build at the beginning of the video. So if you like the video, guys, please drop a like on the video because it really helps the channel, and I hope that I can provide some value to you and make the electron transport chain one of your strengths come exam time. Let's get after it, guys. So aerobic respiration's final stage oxidative phosphorylation. Now oxidative phosphorylation involves reduced NAD and reduced FAD from the Krebs cycle being used. The reduced NAD and reduced FAD basically have hydrogen atoms associated with them and those hydrogen atoms are made up of a proton and electron. Now in oxidative phosphorylation the energy from these electrons is utilized to drive the formation of ATP in large quantities. And we'll get eventually a net gain of 32 ATP from aerobic respiration. Now it occurs across the cristae. So hydrogen ions get pumped from the matrix in the mitochondria across the inner membrane through to the intermembrane space, as you can see on this diagram here. So how are the mitochondria involved in aerobic respiration? Well, oxidative phosphorylation is the formation of ATP via the oxidation of reduced NAD and reduced FAD. And this takes place across the cristae. And the cristae, as we've said, is the folded inner mitochondrial membrane, but it contains key enzymes such as ATP synthase, which are embedded in the membrane itself. Now, a large surface area is provided by the folded inner membrane, which forms the cristae. And that gives a fast rate of reaction for respiration and ATP production. Now, mitochondria are found in large numbers in cells that specifically carry out aerobic respiration. So think here, cells of the slow twitch muscle fibers, for example. Now, what is the electron transfer chain next of all? Because you often hear these two things conflated and, and used in place of each other. Well, basically, the electron transfer chain is part of oxidative phosphorylation. So in order for the synthesis of large amounts of ATP, we need electrons from the hydrogen atoms associated with our coenzymes, reduced NAD and FAD, to pass down the electron transfer chain. Now, the ATP is produced via the action of H plus ions, or protons, moving across the membrane. And that's due to the energy that's provided from the transfer of, of electrons through the electron carriers. And this process where protons are pumped across the inner membrane using the energy from the electrons is called chemiosmosis. And AQA are really keen on you knowing this. Now, glycolysis will produce two lots of reduced NAD per glucose, and the Krebs cycle will produce six lots of reduced NAD and two lots of reduced FAD per glucose. So remember, the Krebs cycle turns twice per glucose. Check out my video on the Krebs cycle for more on that. So here's a little diagram of the electron transfer chain. And I just want to draw your attention to these electron carriers here. And the yellow arrow is showing the electrons bouncing between them. And the energy from that is driving the protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane into the intermembrane space. Now, each reduced NAD produces 2.5 ATP. And each reduced FAD from the Krebs cycle produces 1.5 molecules of ATP. So let's have a closer look here then. So we can see we've got our reduced NAD, aka NADH, and our reduced FAD, aka FADH2 here, and they get oxidized, so they basically lose their proton, lose their electron, and we can see the proton, the hydrogen ion that's been released from them is pumped across the inner mitochondrial membrane, and that uses the energy from the electrons moving along the electron carriers. Now, eventually we get this bank of hydrogen ions, and make sure to say ions in the exam, 
in the intermembrane space. And we call this a chemiosmotic gradient that's been established. Now the hydrogen ions or the protons then flow through ATP synthase and this drives the production of ATP from ADP plus inorganic phosphate. Now we can also see that oxygen here is used to accept those electrons and those protons. So that's why we call oxygen the final or terminal electron acceptor. So let's go through it in a more step-by-step -step manner. So number one, hydrogen ions, aka protons and electrons are released from the reduced NAD and reduced FAD. Number two, the electrons move down the electron carriers and the energy they lose is used to drive or pump the hydrogen ions across the membrane into the intermembrane space. And this is where we get the name the electron transfer or electron transport chain from. Number three, an electrochemical gradient is established, electro because of the charge of the protons, chemical because it's atoms, it's hydrogen, and that's established and there's now more H plus ions in the intermembrane space than the matrix of the mitochondria. Step four, finally, the H plus ions then flow through ATP synthase, which is a membrane bound enzyme, down their electrochemical gradient, driving the synthesis of ATP from ADP plus inorganic phosphate. And this again is known as chemiosmosis. So what happens to all of these protons and electrons then? Well, the protons and the electrons combine with oxygen to form water. And we can see that represented in the diagram here. Now, because of this, oxygen is described as the terminal or final electron acceptor. And you need to know that for the AQA A-level biology exam. And at the end of aerobic respiration, around 32 molecules of ATP are produced. So let's go through some exam practice next of all then. Question one. Explain why aerobic respiration produces more ATP per glucose than anaerobic respiration. Pause the video here and we'll go through the answer. So the answer is, oxygen is the final or terminal electron acceptor, or another way to get that same mark is to say oxygen combines with protons and electrons. Your second mark is for saying aerobic respiration involves oxidative phosphorylation, or aerobic respiration involves the electron transfer chain. And the third way to get a mark is to say in anaerobic respiration, only glycolysis produces ATP. There's no Krebs cycle or link reaction. So question two next of all, when an inhibitor that slows the Krebs cycle was added to a suspension of mitochondria, so that's isolated mitochondria, the rate of oxygen uptake decreased. Explain why. So pause the video and we'll go through the answer. So the answer is, when the Krebs cycle is inhibited, there'll be less reduced NAD and reduced FAD produced. That's one mark. Your second mark is for saying there'll be less hydrogen ions or protons and electrons passed to the electron transfer chain. Therefore, less oxygen will be used as the terminal or final electron acceptor. So guys, that's my video on oxidative phosphorylation. I hope it helped you today. If it did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.